want to walk you through uh, fine tuning of GPT-3 on a custom data set. I thought this would be kind of a fun thing to do, something I've been wanting to play around with. So we're kind of just going to go through the instructions here in the process of fine tuning our GPT-3. So the first thing you have to do is install their CLI. So you, you can go ahead and do that. I've already got it installed, so it's probably going to go pretty quick there. Um, hopefully you don't have any errors, otherwise you could probably just Google the answer to those. The next thing you need to do is set your API key. So this you can get by going up to your account and you have to have an account with them and view API keys. Um, so if you click here, you should get a page like this. You can create a new key secret if you don't already have one. Otherwise you can use your existing key. Um, make sure to keep track of those because you'll, um, you'll need it. But once you have this set up as a variable here, you should be all set. The next thing we need to do is actually prepare our training data. So we need their data in a specific format so that it has a prompt and the completion. So we want to have a bunch of examples of how we want this GPT-3 to work, taking our inputs and generating a certain type of output. So the data set I'm going to be using is generating Radiohead lyrics or songs based on the first line of the song. So I basically like found a data set that has a bunch of Radiohead lyrics in a JSON format. And I ran it through a quick little script that I put together that separates the first line and the rest of the song. So you need to kind of go through and have your data in that, in that structure. Um, they do have a nice little tool here that allows you to prepare the data. Um, just to make sure that it's in the right format that it can use. So we're going to go ahead and run that here. So here's the data that I have that I've sort of scraped. It's just a big JSON blob where I have this prompt, kind of how they had structured it with a line, and then the completion, which would be the rest of the text of the song. And you can see it's all in sort of a JSON format here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So we'll do, we'll drop in the, the JSON here. And it'll run on that. It'll ask us if we wanna remove duplicate rows. We can just say yes. And then it just gives us these recommendations and then go yes. All right, and so then we should be good. So now we've got our JSONL file. So I had already done this once, but it generated a new one for me. And we can go ahead and use that to train our fine-tuned GPT-3 model. So let's continue down the steps here. So now we're gonna actually create the fine-tuned model. We can go through here and call this method. method. So we're gonna do that. And then we need to pass in, let's see, what did they say up here? Pass in the, the file ID or path. So we're gonna pass in the path to our formatted JSON L file, and then the base model. So let's look at what um, base models we can use. Uh, so we want to use DaVinci. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, we've got to do dash M DaVinci. No API key provided. Okay. So I didn't, it didn't use my API key from before. So we did all this. So let's try this now. Cool. So now it's going to go through it and actually um, train our model. 
uh, it'll actually tell you the cost. So this is going to cost about eight bucks. And where we are in the queue, we are at zero, so it started. So it's going to go through and do this. Sometimes this takes a while. Sometimes it'll stop, and they actually have the commands you'll need in here um, in case the in case it stops, um, so that you can go through and uh, continue the job. So you just need to keep track of your ID. And the fun the ID is um, is right here. So yeah, so we'll just wait for that to finish. Cool. So um, if everything runs correctly, you should see it run through these four epochs. And so it gives you this little succeeded note, and then it also gives you the, um, the code that you can run to use your, your um, model. So let's go ahead and test it out. So now we could take our command here, create command, and just enter in a prompt. And we want to make sure that we end with the same um, ending string or separator that we use within our trading data. So let's try something Radiohead like, like um, the commuters are going to work. And then I use this, um, this arrow symbol as my separator. So if we try that, cool. And so you'll see that it doesn't give us a ton of characters. So we can actually, um, there's a command to, uh, to adjust the amount of characters that we're doing. If we do this H, we can increase the max tokens value. Um, so if we do this and then do dash M 60, there we should get a lot more text. Cool, and that's how we get Radiohead songs out of GPT-3. Let's try this one. There we go. We can even do things that are more like existing Radiohead songs. Let's try um, There we go. And it basically spits out um, <laughs> creep, like the exact song. So um, there are other parameters we can use. Uh, so if we look at this, uh, you can adjust the temperature and this will play with how close it is to your, um, your training data or how creative and different it is. So you wanna, they say try 0.9 for more creative applications and zero or lower numbers for values that reflect your training data more strictly. So there's other things you can play with here, but that's just an example of how you can create a custom fine-tuned model with GPT-3.